I have a mouse problem. Now I know it's been a while, it's been about two weeks since I last uploaded and I just want to thank you guys for all the support. It's not always easy to make these YouTube videos, you know, uh, things get in the way. You know, winter preparations and stuff, I put snow tires on the cars, uh, I cleaned all the gutters on the house, I also cleaned the main uh, water ditch. What do you call it? Water ditch? No. Water... Uh, the drainage runoff. Jag har gjort rent bäcken här ute. Ja. Anyway, that did take a while, so I didn't uh, have time to make a video last week. But I'm here today to make a little video, and today we're going to be putting the transmission, the clutch and stuff back onto the engine and then dropping it into the 740. We have a lot of things to do today, so let's get started with the clutch. <laughs> All right, so this is the stock pressure plate off the 500 engine. Uh, now this is self-adjusting and you can tell by these springs right here. Uh, you can also see where it needs to be and where it is. It's uh, way out and it needs to be way in. So we need to reset this. Obviously there's a special tool for this. Uh, I don't have that tool so I'm just gonna do a little way around that uh, and we'll see if that works out. This is a this is a trick that I saw off YouTube so uh, I, I take no responsibility if this works or not. I guess we'll find out one day. Um, but here it goes. Uh, you take these 10 millimeter nuts or M10 uh, nuts. You put them under here where the original bolts go for push put in, for mounting the pressure plate. Slide them under like this. We use six of them. Now the pressure plate back behind all this is not touching the table, it's floating in midair. And you want to make sure that these don't, don't touch that pressure plate. Now I have drilled a hole into the table here, there was already a hole here, so I just utilized that. I'm going to thread this rod through here. And we're going <laughs> to, I found this old uh, wooden drill bit. Not drill bit, I don't know what you call it. Hole maker. And it fits right on these threads. There we go, I just want to align this so that it goes on kind of straight. And then you want to start torquing it down so you see these start moving. I'm just going to put this on here for safety. Yeah, this is an old spring compressor kit, you know, the, the deadly ones. There you go. So let's tighten this down and see what happens. I had to make a cut there because the compressor started. Oh, you saw that? It started moving. That way we know that we can start pushing this adjuster back. Now you want to be really careful because this is just plastic. Now this is where you kind of need 15 hands, since this is all plastic crap. There you go, that's looking good. And there you go, now the clutch is reset and we can put it back on the flywheel. All right, so I just came back from outside. I just gave uh, the flywheel a little bit of a clean off. Got that looking better. Uh, just quickly went over and took off all the rust that was in here. This is the friction plate, uh, obviously not looking too good. It's been overheated at some point. You can see it's all blue. That is not a good sign. So I would never recommend putting something like this back. But for the purpose that we have, yeah, I guess we can put this on here just temporarily, just to get the car moving 
And then we can swap it out later if it turns out it's complete crap and we can't even do a, a base map with it. Then I will just have to swap all these parts out for the proper stuff that I, that I had planned from the beginning. But uh, yeah, let's just run with this, see where we wind up. Honestly, I don't think we're gonna have an issue with this, but you know, it's definitely not new in any way. It's quite worn, but I mean, that's all I can do for now. This is stamped flywheel side. So you just put this to the plywood side. Now you put the pressure plate on, bolt it on. But we start with bolting on the flywheel. Now this can only go on one way since we have this dowel pin right here. Uh, and here's the hole and the flywheel. So let's get started with that. I've cleaned up as good as I can in these holes. I've also cleaned up the bolts. Now I'm just gonna put some, make sure that the threads on these is okay. Uh, I've cleaned the threads off on this, on all these bolts. Just gave them a visual check, make sure they haven't stretched or anything like that. But they check out okay. They should be changed according to the manual, but I'm not gonna bother uh, on the account of what I'm gonna use this clutch for. So there's a dowel pin right here and right here. So we just match that up. Before you put the flywheel on here, make sure that the trigger is not installed so you don't hit it. Uh, that's always a good idea. Now this tool is called an M12. It has 12 points. It's like a, it's like a Torx, but it has 12 points. I guess it would be more like a hex, but a 12. All right, you wanna torque this down to 45 newton meters to start with. You wanna prevent the uh, engine from turning when you're doing this, so you just put a screwdriver in here. Or at least that's what I've always done. Now we need to pull it another 65 degrees. Whoop, forgot to turn the camera on. Sorry about that. Uh, I couldn't find my gauge. Uh, I have a gauge for this. Uh, like a 360 gauge, so I know that I get the 65 degrees. So I had to make my own, because I couldn't find it. Uh, it's quite easy, just take something that is round. In this case, I had to sacrifice one of my stickers. And just poke a hole in the middle, uh, draw out 65 degrees. I just used an angle gauge. And uh, yeah, it doesn't matter how you, how you get there, as long as you get there, right? And I know we have 65 in this range right here. So what I do is I just put a dot right there. And then I pull it until we get to the end mark here. That way we'll know we have 65 degrees. There we go. And there you go. All right, so that's how you do it when you don't have an angle gauge at hand. Just figure it out, right? Now let's remove these blue dots and uh, put the pressure plate and friction disc in there. It's always a good idea to get some brake clean and clean these surf this surface off. You know, your hands has oil on them and just look at that. You don't want that on the clutch. Oh, big mess in here. That's not gonna work. I need to rethink this. Oh, there's a hole way up in there. That doesn't help me worth a shit. Let's put this on. Maybe I'm just doing it wrong or something. I don't know. I've just never gotten this to work properly. All right, so let's put the uh, pressure plate on there. And this needs to get torqued down to 25 newton meters, although, you know, mine doesn't even go that low. It only goes to 30. Now this tool didn't really work in my favor. I'm quite used to doing it by eye anyway, so. 
Yeah, I'd say that's pretty good. Just want to pull this down evenly. So I just do three at a time and do it in a cross pattern. I just snug it down a little bit. It doesn't have to be crazy hard. All right, so that's the clutch sorted. Let's uh, move on to the gearbox now and get that uh, all set up and ready to be put back on here. All right, so let's put this gearbox together. <laughs> if you can't remember, this is the gearbox that we took from the S90, which has a six cylinder aluminum engine, a straight and inline six. Uh, just gonna put some silicone in here. Make sure that we get some lube on here. Just put that on here. There we go, now it's nice and sealed up. That's it for this side. We're just gonna put some little bit, a very, very tiny bit on the splines here as well, because they're very, very dry. So I'm just gonna put some silicone paste on here. Now you don't want to put too much on here because they can, they can sling out onto the uh, pressure disc. Lamel. All right, we got this cleaned up. We got the face cleaned up. We got the throw out bearing in here. I uh, got some grease. Got that lined up nice. So uh, yeah, I say let's just uh, clean up the face on the, the engine a little bit and put the gearbox on. I forgot about one important thing, the sway bar. <laughs> totally forgot about that. Uh, you cannot have the stock sway bar when you're putting a five cylinder engine into these cars because it will hit, which it's doing. All right, that's all I have for you guys today. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm really sorry about my face and this uh, really crude cut of my beard. I don't know, it just, I really failed on this one. Uh, I felt that when I was doing it, like, oh geez, this is not gonna turn out good. And boy, it did not. Uh, so top tip, uh, if you have a beard and need a trim and it's Corona times and you can't really go to the barber shop, uh, just let, just turn into a Wookiee. I mean, that's that's a far better alternative than looking like a 12 year old boy. So uh, with that said, hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you guys for watching. Thanks for all the support. And I will see you, hopefully, a lot sooner than last time. Arigat! Hey. Hey.